Hey guys, so today I'm going to teach you how to make your own XYO bridge. I know the company sells their own geomining kit, but you know, that's like 300 plus dollars and that's not an amount that I was willing to spend. So I decided to look for a cheaper option um, and I was able to find one. Um, now for this, you will need some items. Uh, so you'll need like a Raspberry Pi, a micro SD card, um, HDMI cord, a power adapter, a uh, mouse and a keyboard, and optionally, uh, an Ethernet cable. Um, now, all these things, I'll link in the description if you don't have them readily available at home. Um, all these things should run, run you around maybe 60 to 65 bucks if you live within the U.S., maybe a little bit more. Um, and... You know, for a case, I don't really think you need one uh, just to get started. Um, when I initially got my Pi, um, I just used the box it came in and I cut out holes for the ports that I needed. Um, so after you have like all your items together, um, you're going to need to create a bootable um, image with the micro SD card. Um, this is like fairly easy. Um, it didn't take me more than 20 minutes, I think. Um, from start to finish. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is get um, the bootable image um, from this site right here, uh, which is the uh, XYO developer site, uh, where they show the current version, um, well, the latest release version. Um, so currently, at uh, the time of recording, the latest release version is 1.0.2. And we're gonna go ahead and download that. Um, so you see three icons here, uh, depending on the operating system that you have. Um, so you can download for Mac, Linux, or Windows. Um, I'm on a Mac right now, so I'm just gonna download um, for the Mac. And I'll go ahead and start downloading. Um, now this is a fairly large file um, for some people. Um, which is at 3.2 gigs, uh, and this is compressed, so it is a large file. Um, that's something to, to be aware of. Um, but it shouldn't take too long if you have a decent connection. Um, in the meantime, we will need uh, software to flash the image to the SD card. Um, there's tons of software out there, but um, in this uh, tutorial. The one I'm going to use is uh, called Etcher, and it's like it's super easy to use. It's like three clicks um, to get your um, your bootable image. Uh, it doesn't take that long to uh, flash the image to the uh, SD card, and also this software is available for Mac, Linux, and uh, Windows also, which is super convenient. Um, so what you can do, you can go ahead and download this software and uh, uh, just go through the setup process um, while you're waiting for uh, the large file to download. Um, and after that is done, um, I'll come back and help you guys finish the process. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I hope you were able to complete the previous steps successfully. Um, so now we're going to move on to unzipping the compressed image file. Um, as I mentioned previously, it is a compressed file, so we are going to need to unzip it in order to get the image file um, to be able to flash it to the SD card. Um, so we'll just go ahead and unzip, start unzipping. Um, now I know within the Mac OS, there's a built-in software to unzip certain file formats, certain compressed file formats. Um, and I believe it's the same with Linux, but for Windows, I'm not too sure. So I did go ahead and uh, pulled up a uh, really good software uh, that's pretty much used by uh, everyone for certain file formats, uh, which is called 7-Zip. Um, now what you would go ahead and do here if you're a Windows user is to download the one that you would need um, in the top left hand corner uh, which is for either 32 or 62 bit um, you just go ahead and download and go through the setup process uh, to be able to uh, 
unzip that file. Now, this happened pretty quick for me. Uh, so as you can see here, I have my uh, image file. Um, so now what you would want to do is go ahead and launch the Etcher software that I told you guys to install um, previously. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that software. Oh, by the way, you're also going to want to need to insert your SD card at this point. Um, I know certain people may not have an SD card port on their computer, so I will also put um, some other options in the uh, description for you guys to be able to purchase to uh, continue with this process. Um, so as I said, we'd go ahead and launch the Etcher software. And I'll just wait as that loads. And as you can see, the process is pretty easy. So you'd go ahead and se um, select your image. Um, so my image is right here. Um, I already flashed the image onto an SD card, but I'm just gonna overwrite it, uh, which is no problem. Uh, so usually it will automatically detect your SD card. Uh, if it doesn't, you'll just go ahead and change it and you'll see a list of uh, different uh, devices that may be connected and you would just choose the, the one that's yours. You just hit continue. And then from here, you would just hit flash. Um, so I just need to type in uh, my password to go ahead and continue. And um, estimated time is around uh, 10 minutes. As I said, it doesn't take too long. Uh, the image file itself is around uh, close to nine gigs. Um, so a 16 gig uh, micro SD card should be more than enough. As I said, I'll link everything in the description. Um, so we'll just wait for this to finish and I'll come back and uh, we'll get the Raspberry Pi set up with everything. So now after your uh, flash is finished, um, you should see a screen similar to this, um, flash complete um, successfully. Um, so after this, you can go ahead and remove the SD card, which I'm gonna do. And now we would go ahead and insert the uh, micro SD card into the Raspberry Pi and boot everything up. As you can see, I went ahead and uh, set up the Raspberry Pi. I put in the micro SD card as well as connected everything that's needed. Um, I just pulled these cables from like around the house from like uh, certain devices that I had um, just to put this together. As I said, it's not very hard and it doesn't take um, as much money as needed with the uh, geo mining kit. Um, this is fairly cheaper and it doesn't take that long to set up. Um, so next we're just going to continue with booting up the Pi and uh, finishing the setup. All right, guys. So uh, your Pi should be booted up. Um, upon boot up, you should have seen a few loading scripts and then it should come to this screen that you see here um, that prompts you to enter a password. Now this password can be the same as your uh, login password for uh, the XY, the coin app and also the XYO network app. Um, so that's what I'm just gonna enter right now. Uh, just something simple. And then you would hit continue. And you'll see here that um, I already have mine set up. Um, so uh, usually what you'll see here is um, a form that would ask you to enter basically your logging for your XYO network app. Um, so you would go ahead and type in your email address and your password and uh, and then you would go ahead and uh, log in and uh, you would hit, uh, you'd click claim to uh, claim the bridge.
So once that's claimed, um, you'll see it change to uh, bridge owner and uh, you're all set up. So now your XYO bridge is all set up. Uh, if you need to, you can go ahead and add uh, another archivist. You can go ahead and uh, remove this one if you need to. Um, you don't have to for the time being. You just keep everything as is. Um, and basically, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if this was helpful at all. Um, uh, let me know if you guys need any help in the comment section. And uh, I'll also go ahead and link uh, some other resources in the description. Um, also, some other YouTube, YouTube channels that were helpful um, to me making this video. Um, so thank you. Uh, please subscribe and uh, let me know what other videos you guys would like me to make.